OK. <clears throat> so today we're doing a bit of a new topic. And I've decided to make the new topics like smaller, like more compact to do everything step by step to make you like understand the subject in a more clear way. So today's topic is going to be the adjectives. The new part of speech. Uh, actually, it's not so new. We, we have uh, gone through this when we had a lesson on the terms, then the type of terms, and there we had examples, and there we had the notion of the adjective as a part of speech. And I remind you that adjective uh, describes the noun as a part of speech that describes the noun, uh, telling it that it is, for example, long green, short, tall, and so on, and so on. So, um, in Latin, there are two types of adjectives. And the type of adjectives that we will be going through today is called the adjectives of the first and second declension. Adjectives. The first second now they are called first and second and to do this uh, to understand uh, what that actually means uh, let's look at the examples of such an adjective That is how it looks like in your uh, vocabulary menu in your dictionary. Um, you can find such vocabulary minimum on page page eighteen in your textbooks. You may open it and you may look through the set of adjectives in there. On your whiteboard, if somebody is watching the whiteboard, uh, the whiteboard, this is like on the left side. I've decided uh, uh, on the right. Sorry, I've decided to go right. Uh, the example of the adjective is longus. Then comes the a ending, and then comes the um ending. The correct reading of this uh, vocabulary entry of the adjective of the first and second is like again reading the. Uh, all of the forms that exist in the entry. So, longus, longa, longum. And this adjective, uh, as we know, the adjective as a part of speech can uh, describe any noun, uh, like the noun of any gender. Let's put it like this. And as far as we know, uh, in the first and the second declension, there are all the three genders that can that can virtually exist in the language at all. So it's masculine, feminine, and neutral and ne neutral. And these endings and these forms in the dictionary entry uh, tell us basically how uh, this adjective would describe all the three genders. So, longus, the first form, is designed to, to describe the masculine nouns. Longa, the second form, describes feminine nouns, and longu, the third form, describes neutral nouns. Um, to better understand how this works, Let's first remember a bit about um, the types of the types of terms. Uh, first, we will work with the double word terms. And uh, in the section of double word terms, we talked about uh, the combination of a noun plus an adjective. 
And we've told that uh, in such terms, the noun must always come first and the adjective must come second or in triple word terms, final, last. Uh, so let's let's get the term in English, the long muscle, the long muscle. I forget to share screenshots with you. I guess we should start doing this. That's the, 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 the first screenshot for today. The long muscle. Uh, so when we have such words, we definitely have one noun, which is the muscle, and we definitely have one adjective that describes the muscle and tells, it to, and tells us that it is a long one. So um, we know that the muscle, by the rules of uh, how double terms work, the muscle, the noun, should come first. The adjective, long, must come second. Uh, to translate the term, this term gets to us in uh, the nominative singular form, since it uh, actually names the object we're looking at, it describes it. And uh, it is in singular uh, number. This is only one muscle. So the thing we are doing to translate is we are putting it into the nominative singular form. To do this, let's finish our dictionary entries list and let's uh, write down the muscle dictionary entry, which is the thing that you must know by this point is musculus. Musculi, musculinum. So we have two dictionary entries, the one adjective and one noun, and let's put it in the nativus singularis. We know that the first word in the dictionary entry for the noun is itself, the soul, uh, the nativus singularis form of the noun. So we put down the musculus, and then we choose one of the forms of the adjective to make it uh, gender matched with our noun. In our case, Leongus describes the masculine nouns. And that is the form that we must use. So our term of a long muscle will look like musculus leongus in Latin. Secondly, let's find something feminine to translate. And let's make the term of the long rib. Yeah, you get the question? No, no, doctor. Continue, please. The rib is the word from the first declension, and you must know that this one is costa, feminine. As costa always, longa? Correct. Perfectly correct. And again, for those who don't quite catch it, we've choose, we, we have chosen the form longa because longa describes feminine nouns. And let's get something like the long. What else can be long? So uh, the, the adjective follows uh, the noun in the case. So if the noun is nominative, the adjective is also nominative. Yes. But if multiple nouns come after another, the first is nominative and the rest of nouns is genitive. Uh, we'll get to such examples a bit later if you wish, but yet the general rule is like the first noun is nominative, the second is the second, and all the subsequent are in genitive's case. It is correct. But the adjective, not only in the case, but also in number and in gender, there are three categories that the adjective must match uh, to the noun. For example, let's get the long, let's say the long ligament. And 
let's make ligament in. And the term will look like anyone? Uh, longum, uh, ligamentum longum? Ligamentum longum, correct. Not in the heart. So yeah, why such adjectives are called the adjectives of the first and second declension? Um, in our case of such adjectives, we are choosing the form of an adjective that must match by gender uh, with the noun. And the thing is that um, the adjective that ends in us, that, that has the gender ending of us, can belong actually only to the second declension because the us ending uh, is, exists is existing only in declension two. And in case of, for example, our the long muscle, we will be case changing the adjective longus according to the rules of declension two. Our feminine ending and our feminine form longa has the gender ending a, which exists at this point, only in the first declension. And if we are case changing the longa adjective, we are doing this according to those of the first declension. The um ending, again, as we know, only second declension has it. And such adjective will be case changed according to the rules of the second declension neutral gender. And that is why they're called the adjectives of the first and second declension, because they have one sole dictionary form, but the parts of it uh, will be case changed according to the declensions the gender endings belong to. But that is actually the thing. Now, in your home task that uh, so far don't exist yet in your in your uh, uh, textbooks in your English textbooks because they are like pretty easy to do and uh, oh, Russian students do this quickly but for you I guess we'll stretch it a bit to make it understandable I will make the home desk by myself a bit later and I will post it to you But so far, let's do the tasks. Okay, sorry. So far, let's do the tasks of case changing of some of them. Let's take ah another thing to say. Yes. When doing the task of case changing with the nouns, we talked about the parts of the noun, which are the stem and the ending. And we told that uh, the stem is an unchangeable part of the noun. And the, the stem comes in handy uh, in genitivus singularis and all the subsequent forms. Because, as we have just did, the nominative singular, like the descriptive form, the first one, uh, the words, the forms of the words for nominativus singularis, we are able to take directly from the dictionary entry itself. But for other, for all the other cases and numbers, we need to make stems and we need to make endings. So, the problem in here is how to make stem out of an adjective. And it is done in a different way than the noun does. So to make stem, to make out the correct stem of the adjective, 
you must first put it in the form of lamentibus singularis feminine form. The stem is stem to the lamentibus singularis feminine form of the adjective. So first we are putting it, uh, we are putting the adjective into that form in the nominative singularis femininum. I'll even underline this. And then we're taking out the, uh, the gender ending. So for longus, longa, longum, we're first doing the form of longa. where the A uh, would be the gender ending of the feminine gender. The rest of it is going to be the stem. Longer. Now for this exact adjective, this algorithm may seem to have like the same result for all the genders. So it seems like whenever we take longus, or longum, the stem will stay the same. In all the forms, it will be long. But it's not the general, uh, the general principle. The general is putting it into nominative singularis fem femininum, and that is why. In the list of the adjective of first and second declension, you will find such words as, for example, the adjective red. It is number 58 in the list if you're looking in the uh, workbooks. It looks like Ruber, Rubra and Rubrum. So in these endings, there is not actually only the ending. There is also a part of a stem, and we've talked about such issues when we were speaking about the nouns, the genitive singular form, the ending of the gene of, of the genitive singular form, like the second segment of the dictionary entry, may also include the part of the stem. And there is a lot of adjectives that do the same. For example, the rubber, rubra, rubrum. So if uh, we would take the masculine form as a basis for our stem making, we would make the R ending and rub as a stem. But just if instead of it we are making the rubra the feminine form, the correct one, by the way, and we are making the same procedure of taking out the ending of a, we're going to be left with the stem of rubr. And that one would actually be correct. So in such adjectives, and basically in all the adjectives that, that exist in Latin, only the nominativus singularis femininum form of the adjective can be the basis of the stem making and you must remember this. This is actually a rule of making out a stem of the adjective. So yeah. And that is how, uh, now I'll show you how the case changing works. So let's do the table of nominatives, nominatives, ablatives. of singular forms and the column of plural forms. Singularis, pluralis. And let's first work with ligament, with the long ligament. So nominative singularis is actually done by us. 
it would be uh, liga mentum young group When coming to genitive case, we need to put both of the words in uh, genitivus singularis. For ligament, we are looking at the dictionary form. We notice there is an E in the second. Yep. Ligamenti. And then we are looking at the adjective. It's uh, fe f f femininum nominativus singularis form is leonga, so the stem is leong. We are writing this down, and we are adding something. So we've chosen the um ending in nominativus singularis. That means that we have chosen the second declension uh, rules of case changing, and in the second declension. Genitivus singularis as e. So, so the genitive singular form would be ligamenti longi. Basically, of the long ligament, right? Ablativus singularis. And yeah, uh, the long stem is already made by us. The stem of the ligamentum is ligament. our two stems that we are to put in all the remaining cases and numbers. Ablitivus singularis. Our noun is second declension neutral. Our adjective is also second declension neutral. Basically, it means that they both will have same endings. Same story comes to nominativus pluralis. Second declension neutral has a ending. Our adjective also has second declension neutral, so it also will be an R ending. Genitivus pluralis. The second declension we have orum ending. Both of them will do this. And the nominativus pluralis, they will both have is endings. So notice that. Our adjective and our noun both have same endings. This can only happen in the occasions when both of the words in the combination, both noun and the adjective, belong to the same declension. And that is really important to mention. This is really important to remember. Because in all the cases when uh, the noun and the adjective will not match in declensions, they will never match in the endings. I would even write this down. The endings match only if declensions match. So uh, very soon we will come over the, to the third declension, for example, and the combination of the third declension noun and a second declension adjective, for example, will not have the same endings. Well, virtually in some, uh, in, in one or two uh, cases, they can, they are able to, but not in every form, as it done right now. Now let's do the same thing for the long rib. Let's make the same table. Nomatibus, comatibus, oblativus. Singular number.
and plural number. Oh, come on. This is English. This is not Latin. Uh, uh, Rib is English. Latin is Costa. Costa. Oh, sorry, but Costa. Costa Longa. Costa Longa. Genitive singular. Both of them belong to the first declension. Coste Longhi. Coste Longhi. Coste Longhi. Ablative singularis. The ending would be. Uh. Ah. Coste Longhi. Yeah. Stalonga. Nominativus pluralis. Coste longe. Nominativus. Costarum longer. Correct. Costarum longarum. Mind that arum ending is stressed on yeah. R. R is long, so it's costarum longarum. Yes. Costa is Costa is longest. No. Costa is longest. Costa is longest. The ending is is. I meant e is i s. It's Latin. It's e. Costa is longest. And that is actually it. So the thing I wanted to show is first the structure of the dictionary entry, then to remind you how uh, the adjectives connect to nouns and uh, that they always match in uh, three options, in three, in three uh, parameters, in number, in case and in gender. And uh, I showed you how to properly make the stem out of the adjective, how to mix them together and how to case change this combination. So far you know only the adjectives of the first and second and the nouns of the first and second declensions. So pretty much in all the cases they're going to match. But there is one difficult thing, one difficult example, because the second declension contains the word diameter. Its dictionary entry looks like this. It looks like diameter, diametri, femininum. So, nominative singular looks like masculine. Genitive singular looks like second declension. But it is of the feminine gender. And it has an exclamation mark, which tells us that this is like the exception. The irregular noun. So, uh, the noun itself is not so much regular because it itself will case change according to the rules of second declension, because it has three, it has second declension, totally. It has R ending in nominativus singularis. This is masculine, definitely. But the tradition that the language calls it feminine means that the adjective will connect to this noun in its feminine form. And let's do the translation now. Let's do the uh, the middle diameter term. The middle diameter. So 
So those who are looking at the textbook right now, please find the middle adjective in the list. أنا مش فاهم حاجة يا جدعان هي إيه الـ إس دي والـ دي آر وإيه الـ إن وإيه الـ دي والـ إيه الحاجات دي؟ Nedius, correct, then comes, and, and uh, O uh, for feminine and um for uh, nother. I've told you to pronounce all the three forms, Medius, Media, uh, Medium. Nedius, uh, Media, Medium. Medius. Yeah. Number 38 yeah, in the list. <laughs> So, so, doctor, uh, uh, all these terms uh, uh, should be uh, memorized, of course, I see. the well, adjectives. Yeah, uh, as far as the education process itself goes, yes, they should be remembered, they should be, like, learned. But when we will be doing the tests the test works i won't be able to control if you are looking somewhere or you don't so you may not as well memorize them that is the thing doctor yes it will be in terms latin <coughs> uh no no, 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 don't do this. Really? I see what you are doing in here. You are trying to mix the two words into one. You don't. If there are two words in the English term, there will be two words in the Latin term as well. Ms. Udemeter, is the prefix? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The prefix is the prefix. Uh, Doctor, why we can't add prefix uh, to, to this uh, to uh, this word? Uh, because it's the is not a thing. That is not a thing. I'll explain. Um, so let's start with uh, some of the words. Actually, a lot of the words have something written in in square brackets next to them, right? And in bold. And these parts, like mez, for example, in uh, the adjective of middle, describes the root of a Greek word. And the usage of, of, of such words is uh, a lot, well, is frequently restricted to the clinical usage of terms. Right, so the meso diameter is the term that can actually be uh, can actually exist, and I think it really exists, but in terms of clinics, not in the terms of anatomy. In the anatomical terms, the Latin language is used, not the Greek. Mm. So, uh, because we are describing an anatomical term, uh -huh. we, do, we don't add uh, uh, the prefix uh, of, of, of Greek language. We use a Latin uh, adjective instead. But yes. if we are describing a clinical uh, term, uh, we have uh, we, we use the Greek uh, 
the Greek prefix. And there will be. Uh, so next lesson, uh, we will speak about the Greek prefixes and how they are used, right? Uh, for example, in the word of, 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 let me find this in the word of, of colon, right? Uh, the round intestine, okay? Um, the middle part of the of this intestine can be described as one word as the mesocolon. But the difference in the mesocolon and the colon medial, right, uh, will be um, like the mesocolon is a segment of the uh, of the intestine inside which happen some some for example chemical reactions that are not that are not typical for the other segments of this exact intestine but when we are speaking of it as a middle colon like the colon medium we are not referring to it as a segment but we are referring it to uh, like the place of the colon that is somewhere in the middle, like that can be calculated by length or by uh, like by physical parameters, not by the chemical parameters, but by the physical ones. And in here, the middle diameter is considered to be that type of thing that uh, actually uh, that there is nothing chemical doing uh, uh, happening in the meso diameter okay but the middle part of the diameter is the thing that can be calculated like mathematically not chemically like that's another kind of explanation of course of 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 clinics and anatomy in, in other words to make it simple you can remember uh that if there is a double word in the English term, there must be a double word in the uh, Latin term as well. By reverse, of course, you will have some tasks of like deciphering the, uh, the terms with the prefixes and the suffixes. And when, for example, given the meso diameter, you will be you must be able to decipher it like the the middle part of some diameter of the body for the mesocolon uh, the middle part of the round intestine for for example the uh, endocranium right uh, you must decipher it like the inside part of the skull but when translating from English to Latin, get it, get easy on the terms. If there are two words in the term, it must be described as two words in Latin. Like this. So the middle diameter in here, so there must be two words in, uh, in our Latin term. So the diameter as the noun must come first and the middle, the adjective must come second. So we are doing the term. Diameter is number one, is nominative with singularis, and everything is fine with him so far. But when the adjective connects, it must connect, it must match the case, the number, and the gender. But the gender of the word is traditionally feminine. This is an exception. And the gender of the adjective must match the gender of the noun. The gender of the adjective must be feminine. 
So we do the geometer. Media. And in this case, we have chosen different declensions. Or actually, we didn't choose, and they just are different. So it is second declension for the noun and first declension for the adjective. And this is the case where the index will not match. Let's do the case changing thing. Anyone to get me getting tables for the values? Diametry. 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 Medium. No. Geometry. Medium. Yeah. So the stems are diameter mm -hmm. and medi. Mm -hmm. Let's give singularities. Diameter. Correct. Diameter, um, me, me, okay. Me, me do, me do? Nope. This um, is the first declension. In first declension, the ending is R. Diameter, media. Yes. Mm. I mean, the was pluralis. Second declension, masculine. Diametri, midi. Correct. Can I give us pluralis? Diamit room. Diamit room. Diamit room. Diamit room. Diamit room. The ending is all. Diamit room. Diamit room. Mediorum. No, mediarum. Mediarum. It is first. Mediorum, mediarum. Abilitivus pluralis. Abilitivus. Diametris. Diametris. Medius. 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 Don't get caught by the double E. The double E is perfect uh, as far as the grammar requires it. So if by grammar there is E in the ending of the stem and E in the beginning of the ending, there is a double E. It is fine. So yes, basically this is it. This is how the case changing with the adjectives work. And yeah. Let's get the complex example of, for example, two uh, nouns and one adjective. Let's get something like. the internal veins of the brain. Stone edges. Okay. Internal veins of the brain. 
so this is a triple word term, so we need only to like to translate it. There is no need to case change so far. So first, let's do the translation from English to English. Like, let's decide what will be the order of our words. First, must come the word that actually describes the thing we are looking at. What are we looking at? Uh, veins at the veins. The second uh, must come the noun. The final must come the adjective. Uh, uh, veins that is brain. internal of the brain. No, veins of the brain. That, of the brain that is internal. internal. Oh, okay. That are internal. The veins are internal. Uh, <laughs> subject uh, agreement, yeah. not it's an agreement. So veins are nominative case, plural number, there's a lot of veins. The brain, the noun that comes second, is the genitive, and the brain is only one, genitive, singular. Internal must match the noun it describes, and internal describes the veins. So it's also nominativus pluralis. And then let's do the dictionary address. For vein, it is vena, vena feminium. The brain, uh, we are speaking about like the head brain, the skull brain, which is the cerebrum. Cerebri, meldrum. And internal is first we are first we're doing the dictionary entries, not the term itself. Internus, interna, internum. We have the order. We have the forms. All that is left is to put the words in the correct endings. So veins. Nominativus pluralis of the first declension will look like like what? Vena. Mm, vena uh, serib. Uh, Cerebri interna. Interna. It's In an ending. It's plural. It's the and the winds are plural. So the adjective must be like the name in, uh, in the gender and in the number and in. In case. In case. Right. So internal veins of the brain would be vena. Cerebri interna. We can do another one. We can do the branches of the red core. Translating from English to English, what would be the order? The red, red of the core branches. Nope. What we are looking at? What are we describing? The red of the branches uh, core. Eh? The red. Uh... Red is red is a color. Red is the adjective. We're looking at the branches, we're describing the branches, and then we're telling that they belong to some core. So branches will come first. Core. Then comes the noun, last comes the adjective. Core. Core of the branches? No, 
Branches of uh, core of the red. Branches of the core red. The core red. Getting to the different. <laughs> يا جدعان هو الحضور عليه بوينتات ولا لازم اتفاعل معاه في المحاضرة عشان اخد بوينتات ولا ايه بالظبط؟ لا الحضور لوحده كفاية تمام يا اسطى شكرا يا جماعة حد سمع الدكتور؟ لا مش سامع لا أنا مش سامع دكتور دكتور وي كان هير يو أي ثينك يور مايك از يور مايك از ميوت أي ام ويتنج فور يو تو ميك ذا تيرم اه اوكي سامع رامي 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 راموس رامي يا ابني عشان جمع رامي ايوه ايوه صح كده تمام رامي نوكليس نوكليس نوكلي يعني نيلا هو عايزها جينيتيف استني نيوكليس عايزها جينيتيف وعايزها نيوكلي لا يعني نيوكليس عشان طلع شفت بقى تمام استني رد بقى ربنا يسهل انت عامل بالسلامه روبر ياه روبر نوب روبري 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 Because uh, the ending of the adjective must match the ending of the noun if they are in the same declension. Yep. And same. we have to get the, the stem of the noun, which we get from the singularis nominative feminine case. Mm. Pretty much. And that's it. That is how you do the, the translations. So for the home task, again, I will compose the task by myself. And I will give you the handout assignment today evening or tomorrow evening. Depends on how fast I will make it. Uh, the task will be to translate the double word terms. We will first practice with double words to translate and to case change the term. Like to make the table and to make the endings. And for those who can't for some reason see the whiteboard, I'm going to post the final screenshot right now. Doctor, is the, the lecture being recorded? Oh, sure. Yeah, because the, the, the recordings of the previous lectures was very helpful. I know, that's why I do the recordings. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, that's it. That's all for today. It's all for the adjectives of the first and second, or okay. first type of adjectives. And thank you, by the way, for the practice. So far, you're the most active group. You're the most active online group on practicing and training. Thank you. Doctor. Very, very, much, thank you. very much value that. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you for the lesson. Thank you. Goodbye.